National Mortgage Professional Magazine's webinar titled, How to Market Yourself on Facebook Without Annoying Your Friends and Family, sponsored and presented by CityBlast.com and MortgageMingler.com. I would like to thank all of our webinar attendees for taking the time out of their busy days for this very valuable and informative webinar in our ongoing series of webinars. Today's webinar will be conducted by Sean Nielsen, co-founder of MortgageMingler.com and CityBlast.com. They are two sister sites. Uh, MortgageMingler.com is for mortgage professionals, and CityBlast.com is for real estate professionals. Sean Nielsen is a real estate agent, writer, and public speaker from Toronto who travels North America to teach e agents about effective use of social media for the real estate business. On top of running Mortgage Mingler, Sean is also the CEO of City Blast, the world's largest social media listing service that currently reaches over 4.5 million people every day. If you have questions during the webinar, please be sure to send them via the questions tab on your GoToWebinar console, and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar. Um, also, we'll be sending out the PowerPoint presentation and a link to the recording of the webinar to everyone who registered for the webinar tomorrow for your future reference. So you don't have to worry about seriously taking notes during this webinar. You're going to get a copy of everything tomorrow. Without any further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our presenter, Sean Nielsen. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Just wanted to um, very quickly here do a bit of housekeeping. Um, First of all, can everyone hear me? Just want to make sure that folks can hear me uh, and that my audio is good. If you can hear me, go ahead and chat uh, into the box there and let us know. And also, would love to welcome you guys on to the, to the uh, show here. Um, Beverly, are you seeing uh, some responses there? I'm seeing lots of responses. Everyone says they can hear you. Awesome. You guys, you can, you can stop responding. It's good. We're happy now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stop responding. Uh, at the end, we're going to do some q and I'm going to reserve a lot of time for uh, Q&A, so um, let's, uh, let's get underway here. But as we're going along, feel free to type your questions into the question box, and I will be trying to get around to as many of them as I can in about the last 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, we are going to cover a lot of material as well, so maybe keep a pen and paper handy there to write anything down uh, that you wanted to chat about later. And at, even after the webinar, we are going to be available at Mortgage Mingler and uh, at the City Blast line to answer your questions about social media or uh, by emailing, emailing us info at mortgagemingler.com. So the conversation continues. Be prepared for questions and answers, and uh, let's get underway. I am Sean Nilsson. I am the co-founder of City Blast and of mortgagemingler.com. The two sites are sister sites of one another, and so... Um, Mortgage Mingler and City Blast do essentially the same thing. Sometimes I'll talk about City Blast, sometimes I'll talk about Mortgage Mingler. Uh, they're essentially the same thing. City Blast, just for your information, if you're not already aware, is for real estate agents, and Mortgage Mingler is for loan officers, mortgage agents, and other mortgage professionals. So um, when I'm talking about the two things, they're kind of the same thing. I am a real estate agent, and City Blast was actually founded slightly ahead of Mortgage Mingler. Um, and the way that it started was like this. Uh, in my first year in real estate, I did 24 deals and over $165,000 in gross commissions off of my Facebook wall. So we're talking about right off of my Facebook. And this is not using any sort of Facebook advertising or anything like that. This was just by posting content on my Facebook and then chatting with people and turning them into clients, taking them out to view or list properties. And then, uh, sorry, I'm just... Uh, getting uh, speaking with someone here, taking them out to viewer list properties and um, converting them into clients. And I was able to do 24 deals that way in my first year. And uh, people started coming up to me in my office. Um, other folks were asking me what my secret was and how I was getting on the leaderboard so quickly. And those folks um, and my broker eventually asked me to do trainings on the subject. So I started conducting seminars in my office. Uh, I was teaching people. At the end of the training, they would come up and say, hey, you know what, this is, um, this is awesome, I love this concept, but I don't want to do it myself. This is just another thing that I would, I'm going to have to do uh, that I don't have time to do every day. And they basically cajoled and convinced me <laughs> to become a social media manager. And I started taking people on and managing their accounts, and I was doing one, two, five, ten people's accounts. Uh, today between City Blast and Mortgage Mingler, we manage well over 7,000 people's, uh, 7,000 uh, folks' real estate uh, presence on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, et cetera. 
And so it kind of happened to me by accident, just out of a system that I was using successfully. And we've seen it work now for several years. It works, and it works great for everybody who employs it. And I'm going to teach it to you today. So I just want to uh, let you know, Mortgage Mingler, City Blast, we use inbound marketing. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And it's how to market yourself on Facebook without annoying the heck out of your friends and family and all that kind of thing, which I know is obviously of interest to a lot of people. I'm going to show you how you can definitely increase the amount of deals that you're doing without increasing the amount that everybody is annoyed by your posts on your social media accounts. Quick piece of housekeeping here. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn quite a bit. And um, I'm going to mostly focus on saying Facebook. But when I talk about any of them, this has application for everything. So if you're uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Vine, Snapchat, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of it. It's all uh, going to be relevant for whatever social media you're using. So feel free to substitute the social media channel that you're using in. This has application everywhere. This is not going to be specific to anyone. If you hear me saying Facebook, don't tune out just because you, you're not uh, applying uh, your strategy to Facebook, although you probably should be. We find about 70% of leads uh, through social come directly through Facebook itself. So without further ado, I want to first explain the opportunity, and we're going to be really quick. We're not going to spend much time on this part, but I want you to understand that there is a massive opportunity um, in Facebook to make money. And some people think, oh, this is just uh, another one of these things that I'm, it's just a bunch of junk that's going to pass. And I would like to contend, I mean, my track record contends otherwise, but I'd like to also contend otherwise with a little bit of logic here. Over 90% of home searches begin online. And I think the last number that was published by NAR last year was 94%. So if we can imagine over 94% of home searches begin online, what does that actually mean? Well, I'll tell you. It used to be that Mr. and Mrs. Home Buyer or Seller would be sitting around the dinner table at night, and then they would decide, hey, you know what? We're going to buy, sell, upgrade, downgrade, whatever. The next step, they were calling the professionals that they knew. They were calling the real estate agent. They're calling the mortgage person. They're calling the lawyer. They're getting prepared. And they were bringing these people into the fold right off the bat. And that is absolutely not the case anymore. It's completely upside down. Um, they, over 90% of home searches beginning online. It means that those people sit around. They make a firm decision to transact in real estate. They are going to buy. They are going to sell. And the next step is they're going to educate themselves before they ever contact you. And the amazing thing to consider here is that that is a huge opportunity. You shouldn't be scared by that. It used to be that people were just coming in off the street and they were being allocated. Now you have a chance to make your mark and get in front of those people. Those people haven't committed to a professional in the industry yet, and they are out there with the decision to buy or sell already made in their heads. To me, this is a massive, massive opportunity, and this specific opportunity is what I've exploited uh, my entire real estate career. Here's another statistic that kind of goes hand in hand with that. This is in lockstep. People spend three times more time on Facebook versus any other website in the world. How amazing is that? To me, this says one simple thing. If I'm going to catch fish, I need to fish where there are fish. And the part of the lake with the most fish in the case of the internet is Facebook. Facebook has way more people at any given time than any other place on the internet that I could possibly be. So if I know that I'm trying to capture those 94% of people who are, have decided to transact and I got to get out there and I got to find them somewhere, Facebook is mathematically my best place to potentially find those folks. Hey, Here's another reason. Actually, yep. uh Sorry to cut you off. I think this would be a good time to actually have our poll question since we're talking about Facebook. Yeah. Um, we have a poll question for the audience. I'm going to put it up on your screen if you could just answer. Uh, the question is, have you ever done a deal through Facebook? If so, is it difficult to keep track of and stay up to date? And there are a couple of options. If you have done a deal, you could say it was difficult or it was easy. Um, if you haven't, then you could say it was difficult or easy that way. Or I do not have a Facebook account, which... <laughs> which scares me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's see how people respond. I'll give you a couple of seconds to respond and then I'll share the results with you. Yeah, I know you're pretty passionate about this topic. While we're waiting for folks to respond, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on using Facebook and social media to market yourself? 
Well, actually, I actually recently bought a home. I bought a house in January, and um, I did all of my research online. So uh, I was one of those people who started the home search <laughs> online. So I definitely yeah. agree with everything you're saying so far. Yeah, it's great. The trick is to be in front of those people and be ready and waiting when um, the time to buy or sell uh, happens. And that's why consistency is so key. And we're going to talk a bit about consistency. And we're going to definitely talk about what you should be posting uh, in just a moment. Do we, have, uh, do we have results starting to roll in there? We do. Actually, I'm going to close it up in a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to share the results. We have a very, very large majority of people leaning one way. <laughs> I'm going to close it up, and we'll share. All right, so 3% of you said yes, and it was difficult to stay up to date. 8% said yes, and it was easy to stay up to date. 25% no, and I think it would be difficult. 58% said no, but I think it would be easy. And 6% of you do not have a Facebook account. <laughs> For the 58% who have never done a deal and thought it would be easy, my question is, why haven't you done a deal then? <laughs> exactly. If, <laughs> if it would be easy to do a deal off of Facebook, and does, uh, maybe these are people who don't want more deals. <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case. Um, okay, cool. So that's really valuable to know. We'll talk a bit about uh, some of that stuff as well. I want to kind of give you another angle on why Facebook may be a really great place for you, and then let's talk about what we're actually going to do and what I've done in the past and what uh, City Blast and Mortgage Mingler do for folks. And it's such a simple strategy, but it is the absolute definition of counterintuitive. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see folks' questions after we explore this topic a bit. There's another reason that Facebook is so powerful for writing deals and for uh, getting more business, et cetera. In the old days of marketing, you had to choose between two different styles of marketing. You could do one-to-one -one or you could do one-to-many. And we all know these two styles. And the one-to-one -one is great for, for some things, but not for others. Let me give you an example. One-to-one -one is like going to a networking function, uh, networking function and shaking hands with people and uh, chatting with them about you know, their needs and business. And, there's door knocking. You can go door to door and meet people. There is cold calling. You can cold, you can cold call somebody, speak with them on the phone one on one. And obviously the advantage of these styles of marketing is you can build a relationship with these people. Even in a short period of time, when someone gets to ask questions and you can chat back and forth, you can build a bit of a rapport and that person decides if they like you or not. And then you say, hey, yeah, here's my business card. Let's, uh, let's chat. The thing that sucks about one on one marketing is it takes forever. Anybody who's ever tried to go door knocking or cold calling or meeting people at functions all the time knows that it takes forever to get your message out to a lot of people. So that's the shortcoming of the one-to-one -one approach. The one-to-many approach is amazing for the complete opposite reason. One-to-many is awesome for reaching lots of people. You create one message and you post it out to tons of people. So let's imagine a billboard. You create a billboard, you put it on the side of the road, next thing you know 100,000 people have seen your billboard. Or you send out 10,000 flyers to your target neighborhood. Or, 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 there are a million ways, you know, radio, uh, television, all sorts of broadcast. We all know the one-to-many approach and it's great for time saving because you can leverage one piece of effort and put it out to many people. The, the challenge with one-to-many is you can't build relationships. I don't care how great your billboard is or your flyer that goes out, people are not going to see that one thing and not even be able to say anything back to you because you're not there in person to talk to them and go, you know what, that Sean's a good egg, I like that guy and I want to work with him. It just doesn't happen and we all know it. Those of us who have been in the business for a while, we know you can send out marketing materials to hundreds or thousands of people and not hear anything back and you just feel like the did those things even get delivered? And uh, mortgage folks, we know that we're doing this both for uh, potential clients and we're doing it uh, to market to real estate agents and it's always kind of the same thing. How many um, calendars and magnets and all these kind of things do you send out and it's just like you can hear crickets uh, on the other end of that activity. So it's great getting belly to belly because you get that interaction and that engagement you build relationships. This is how social media changed the world and why Facebook is going to be such a huge opportunity is because you can do both at the same time. You can create one message, get it out to tens, hundreds, or even thousands of people, and then anyone who's interested in chatting with you about the topic 
can start a conversation with you one-on-one. -on -one. And the interesting thing about that is it's even better than many one-to-ones because in many one-to-ones, you go through lots of people who are not interested. So if you're door knocking, some people slam the door in your face because they don't want to talk to you. Whereas with social media, you can post your message out, all your friends can see it, and then only the ones who are interested in talking to you about the subject matter will start the conversation with you. And so it's like you've selected only the doors to knock on of people who want to talk to you about it. Super powerful uh, method for communicating. One issue, though, is experts recommend spending about an hour per day on your Facebook marketing. And this is from uh, a couple of different sources. Spending an hour a day, problematic. Busy professionals don't have an hour a day. So I know, you know, you're busy doing 10,000 other things running your business and adding in a task. If, if we were to wrap up this uh, webinar today and you had a new chore to go and do that took an hour a day, it's probably not going to be something that most of you will be able to do. Some people will be able to do it. And when I started, I was doing it. I was doing an hour a day. And let me tell you, it works like crazy. But most people don't have an hour a day. We have a solution for that problem as well. So um, let's get into kind of the nuts and bolts here. Uh, and Beverly, feel free to jump in anytime. Uh, I don't mean to monopolize uh, the conversation here. So feel free to jump in with your thoughts. But I'm going to move in um, here to chatting about the what. What is the activity we're going to specifically perform in social media that's going to help us generate all these deals that I'm talking about? Okay. The answer is inbound marketing. Inbound marketing is the golden key that's going to unlock your ability to generate more deals consistently out of your social media channels. And the definition is here on the screen, but we're going to talk a bit more in depth in just a second about what it really is. Earning the attention of prospects and drawing customers to your website by producing content customers value. Boom. Okay, so here's why this is counterintuitive. There are, I see people all the time trying to generate business off of their uh, social media accounts, and they say, hey, I've written the most deals in the past 12, uh, or in the past 12 months or in the past month. I'm the number one guy to go to. If you're looking for the best rates or to get a hard deal done, uh, call me. Here's my email. Here's my phone number, etc. And to be honest with you, nobody else cares. Nobody on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or anywhere else, for that matter, really cares about how many deals you've done. Sure, you might get you might be able to get a deal out of it just by being consistent and active. If you post that message enough time. Uh, you know, potentially 95% of the people are going to be super annoyed with you and maybe a, a few people will have uh, come your way and said, hey, I'd like to do a deal. But there is a better way to do it. So let's, let's try to invert that and focus on content customer's value, okay? And the way we're going to envision that is that social media is like a social event. And you should act as you would at a party where you want everyone to like you. Let's imagine we show up at the party and we're going to use the two strategies. And I'm going to give you an example of the second strategy here. So I walk into the party and I walk up to the first person and I go, hey, hey there, nice to meet you. Uh, did you know that I'm the number one uh, loan officer? I'm the number one mortgage agent in the city. Uh, I wrote 12 deals in the past 12 days. How do you feel about that? Uh, if you want to uh, buy or sell property anytime soon, refinance, here's my card. Call me, there's my number, there's my email. Um, and then you go, see you later, and walk off to the next person. <laughs> As you can imagine, this is not a successful approach. And I see it from professionals of all sorts. In the real estate business, uh, it's particularly bad. You'll see agents who are like, hey, I'm number one. I sold four listings in uh, my area. Call me, here's my number. This is a recipe for annoying people. People are annoyed when you just talk about yourself, and they would be annoyed at a party, and they're going to be annoyed on Facebook. It's not a place to just sit there and talk about yourself. Let's imagine the inverse. What if I walked up to somebody and I said, hey, have you seen this article that just came out in the local newspaper uh, or the local real estate news where it gave the top 10 uh, best renovations under $1,000 for ROI when you sell your property? Can, you'll never imagine what number one was. What is that other person going to do in that case? They're going to say, no, I haven't. Really? What's number one? 
So now you've used a piece of content that the other person may have a chance of actually being interested in. They're not going to be interested in how great your July was for sales uh, or for deals. But they might be interested in something that has value for them. Oh, really? Top 10 for ROI and I'll never believe what number one was? All right, fine. Tell me. Let's hear about it. And so on and so on. There are myriad examples of different types of content that you can choose or different types of things that you can post which are going to be of interest to other people and are going to get the conversation going. And guess what? You're the professional. So the content that you create is going to engender uh, interest and questions from people. And when people are asking you questions, you're going to become the subject matter expert and you're going to be able to talk to them about where they can get the best deals, what the best options are for them, tips and tricks that they can use, different ways to structure deals, all that stuff that you already know that nobody's talking to you about right now because you haven't started a conversation that's of interest to the other person yet. So this is the strategy of inbound marketing. Does it work for mortgage agents? Of course. It's especially effective for small businesses with high dollar values, long research cycles, and knowledge-based products. I think um, we can all name a business like that. We're in that business. But from, this is actually these quotes I pulled from Wikipedia in the exact same Wikipedia article. One criticism of inbound marketing is the time and effort required to create content. So we've come back around to the same problem that we addressed before, which was addressed by, I believe we pulled that uh, at a Mashable before, which is people don't have time who are professionals really to do this strategy. It's very time prohibitive. And when I started out as a real estate agent in 2007, 2008, um, I did have time and I quickly found as my strategy was working, I had listings and buyers and things were going crazy and then I, did, I actually didn't have time to do the social media marketing that was making me busy. So I was in a real uh, bit of a troublesome situation which I resolved by uh, outsourcing and hiring somebody to help me out. And that's what Mortgage Mingler does for the mortgage industry for the real estate industry at City Blast uh, for real estate agents, Mortgage Mingler for mortgage agents. Mortgage Mingler solves this problem for you folks. And we're gonna I'm gonna come back to this in a minute, but let's go over now to my Facebook. So we're we're on sorry Beverly, did you have anything to add to that before we uh, take a look at my Facebook here? No, I was just gonna say that even on just my personal Facebook, I know that most of the things that I share or that my friends share are those, you know, the BuzzFeed list or anything that's funny, it's just something that, you know, gets people to uh, to think and to to read, you know, anything that, that they would be interested in. So, and I agree with you with what you're saying, that if you have something that's related to the mortgage industry that would be of interest, it's definitely better for people to read about that than about you. Obviously, you know, they know that you're a professional. They know that that's what you do for a living, but how can you help them? And if you know about the industry and you are an expert, that will definitely help you, help them have more faith in you to know that they'll, you'll be able to help them. Yep, 100%. Absolutely. So this is a strategy, and again, you sort of touched on it there as well. This is a strategy that works. If you look at the largest companies in the world, they are using the strategy. They're focusing on content that other people care about. In, if you're putting up a billboard or a television ad or a radio ad, you st they still use outbound marketing. They're saying, here's our product, our product is the best, go buy our product. But if you look at their social media presence, this is the way to do it. You need to be focusing on content that other people care about or people are going to tune you out. Why? Because in social media, people don't have to listen to you. If I'm driving down the highway and there's a billboard, guess what? It's there. There's nothing I can do about it. Whereas in social media, I can just stop following somebody whose content I'm not interested in. And so it's democratized people's attention. And so you need to use a better strategy to get their attention in the first place. And that strategy is inbound marketing and using something that's of value to them to first start the conversation with them. So this is my Facebook. We actually just um, test published a post uh, like 30 minutes ago, 27 minutes ago here. Uh, before we started, and you can see already the comments and the likes and everything have started to roll in on this. Um, this is an example of some inbound marketing. So my market is Toronto. That's the market where I initially began uh, as a real estate agent. And you can see here, looking to relax and enjoy your meal away from the hustle and bustle of the street, 
here are the best back patios in the city and best backyard patios in Toronto and my friends and followers can just click on that and you'll see here we're going to BlogTO. BlogTO is like a major um, uh, news source for the Toronto area. It's a started as a blog but now it's basically a massive online magazine and you can see it's got some cool pictures, best backyard patios in Toronto, people recognize these spots, they love them, uh, and it gets the conversation going. As you can see right here, Allen's is great, it was pleasantly surprised by Greenwood Smokehouse, great to see the Danforth represented. And I'm going to go ahead and like his post, uh, and we're rocking and rolling. Uh, we'll come back to that one, some of you saw that there's a listing there, we'll come back to that. Uh, this beautiful house, in the, oh, and you can see here, I was just recently in Barcelona, so I've got my own posts on here as well to give it a bit of a personal flavor, and you definitely want to consider doing that kind of stuff as well. Uh, house in the Beach, Drew Mandel Architects. This beautiful house in the beaches still maintains it's not uh, a nod to its history and neighborhood despite its modern renovation. How do you like it? People can click on that, and I'm sure, as you know by now, it's going to go over and we're going to be able to see this article on uh, Arch Daily, so I guess this is Architecture Daily, um, and it's a Toronto house which is being featured, so obviously as a real estate agent, it's a cool piece of content to feature out um, about Toronto, and the connection I'm sure is not lost on you guys, nor is it lost on everyone on my Facebook. I do not simply post market statistics, trending reports, and all that kind of thing. And the reason for that, you may think that that's good. And we, at the beginning, several years ago, started th by thinking that probably that's what most people wanted. And we, you get way higher engagement by posting this kind of stuff. Uh, we do post uh, market reports and all that stuff, um, and rates and everything. But you got to give it a little bit of sizzle, and you got to kind of branch out from just focusing on those things. So. Uh, best jazz bars in Toronto. This one went crazy. There's like people all commenting and, and liking on that. There's some train tickets for me. There's me at the Eiffel Tower, uh, a restored schoolhouse. That's cool. Um, and on and on and on. We could go through Toronto, five Toronto buyers let loose in cottage country. That's obviously pretty cool. So anything that you think is going to be of interest to your friends and followers is what you want to focus on. And again, mine is I use City Blast, so my posts are not done uh, by me. They're actually done by my social media assistant who works at City Blast. And but you can model yourself after this, and obviously you'll have uh, if you are in the mortgage industry a mortgage spin on what you're doing. But you can see the gist of it. You want to focus on real estate related topics that will be of interest, and, and certainly mortgage related topics that will be of interest to other people and get them interested and get them started talking with you. And this is how you get the conversation going. Um, and on and on. I could show you more examples. But I think let's, I'd like to move on to sort of a different uh, sort of portion of this. Uh, Beverly, what do you think about this strategy, first off? I think it's great. I think that, uh, you know, it just, it shows that you, you're, you're a person. You have interest, you want to see what other people think, it's not all about you. So I think that's great that you, you like to get other people's feedback on things as well. Yep, absolutely. And the cool thing is, this is where the conversation starts. You know, glad you liked it. I mean, obviously I'm not really thinking about what I'm writing right now, but now you get the conversation cooking here um, and you can start to build, not it's not going to happen in one post and it's not going to happen in one week, but over time you build yourself as a, as a thought leader. And as an example, uh, at City Blast, which is the, the real estate agent side of things, we estimate that we generate approximately seven to $8,000 in commissions for the average City Blast member every year. And I wish we could take credit for having some sort of secret magical um, approach. I mean, certainly we do use the right approach, but the consistency is really what does it. The reason is people turn on City Blast, we manage their social media for them and we do these things for them or they turn on Mortgage Mingler and lo and behold, three, four, five deals a year come in off of the posts. And the trick is to stay consistent and to find that hour a day 
that's the challenge that we kind of talked about. Um, busy, busy professionals don't have an hour a day. That's the problem that City Blast was uh, set up to solve, as we talked about kind of my bio at the beginning. City Blast, Mortgage Mingler are simply doing this for you. If, you. if you can stay consistent and do this for yourself, you will see the same results. You just have to do it day after day or you know, every couple of days, stay on top of this stuff. I want to show you something else that's really cool. So I'm going to go on City Blast. Mortgage Mingler, you'll see, this is Mortgage Mingler, the site. This is for mortgage agents. It's an exactly the same uh, service as City Blast, except for the experts who work at Mortgage Mingler are specifically focused on getting content for mortgage agents. I'm going to show you something on City Blast because that's what I'm connected to. So my dashboard is on City Blast, um, but it proves the point. So my the cool thing uh, that we get here because um, City Blast agent is posting to my account on my behalf, we can track all of the results of all the posts. So all all these posts that go out, you see here, we're tracking the clicks, we're tracking the likes and the comments and all that kind of thing, and it shows you an interesting point. Some people say, you know what, I tried using Facebook and nobody said anything on my posts. And I want to show you something here that's pretty interesting. In the last 30 days, here are the results of my posts. I've had nine shares. I've had 17 comments. I've had 63 likes. Now, I have a lot of friends and followers. But notice this, 786 clicks. So 90% of the engagement that I'm getting through my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and social media accounts come in the form of people who didn't like, comment, or share my article. They just clicked it and read it and then left. And why this is so powerful is even if you're looking at a post, let's see, some of these posts got some great traction. Other ones got medium traction. This one didn't do so great. You know, oh, man, uh, six people like this post. Maybe it's terrible. Not so. 90% of the people who are engaging with anything you're doing are doing it in a, in a secretive or obfuscated fashion. You can't see that they're there uh, absorbing that content, but those people still saw it and acknowledged, hey, Sean posted some cool thing about Toronto or about real estate or about the market or some tip or something to help me. And those people are remembering you just the same as the person who wrote a comment or a, a click like or whatever it is. So don't get discouraged by just the results that you see on the screen because it's like an iceberg. About 90% of the activity is hidden underneath the surface and you can see it's the same for the average member here. The average person's only seeing a few likes and comments and shares, et cetera. But look at the clicks. This is where you get to like, for instance, uh, Buffini and these other people who talk about getting out there and getting touches and getting in front of people and reminding and reminding and reminding. And this is a great way to do it, but the only way to do it is to stay consistent. So um, another interesting thing, sorry, Beverly, did you want to jump in there on that topic? Nope, I think you covered everything on there. <laughs> cool, yeah. I mean, there are lots of different strategies that you can use. Uh, one, but the, all roads kind of lead to Rome here. We want to, we've, over time, okay, for starters, we've done uh, to date, just, I just want to give you some validation for what I'm about to say. So we've done 1.63 million individual posts. Each one of those is a custom post. This is not like sending out a thousand things at one time. Every single one of these posts has been created by one of our social media experts and posted out to our clients. We reach 5.5 million people a day. In the last 12 months, we estimate we've generated $54 million in uh, agreements through, uh, or, sorry, commissions through our, um, our posts on people's accounts. And we've tracked all the results of everything we post and we've developed some best practices. So, I'm going to give you guys some best practices here, and then let's jump into some Q&A. We should be coming in up to about 20 to 15 to 20 minutes left, and we'll do some Q&A. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of um, people with questions out there. Um, let's talk about some best practices. So one of the best practices that we found is using questions. So you always, you almost always want to have a question mark in your post, or else a call to action. So if it's not a question mark, it's going to say something like share if you agree or click here to find out more or something like that. 
you want to have either a question or a call to action in every single write-up that you do. Uh, that's one thing. Using great and powerful photos is another critical, critical element. You want to use a really interesting photo that catches the eye uh, of people who are checking out your post and makes them interested in clicking on it. So you'll see great photos here. Another thing is lists. We love lists and we love polls and we love quizzes and we love engagement. Best backyard patios in Toronto, that's a list, right? House in the beach, that one's gonna be, we call this house porn. It's visual, visually stimulating house uh, images, right? How do you like it? Porn that my friends post on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll leave that alone, but yes, that's, uh, that's uh, it's awesome. The that the house, the images of houses and whatnot are amazing. Best jazz bars. It's a list. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Restored schoolhouse images. So you'll notice a pattern here. We also have quizzes. We're not finding any of those quizzes. Five Toronto buyers. This one's like a little kind of a game. People competing against each other. Use these sorts of engagement strategies. Great images, questions, and calls to action. Uh, and lists and things that people would be interested in. Create a mystery, right? Are you looking to relax and enjoy your meal away from the hustle and bustle? Oh, don't you want to know where to go? All you have to do is click here and you're going to find out the answer. So create a bit of mystery. Make that person click. Make them get on there and click through. And these are the strategies where you're going to really start to see engagement. You're going to start to see a lot of success in terms of writing deals and you're going to be able to start to convert these people. Now, of course, uh, it benefits me to tell you this, but it's the truth. You will find that it is very challenging to stay consistent with doing this. And I've been in this industry long enough, both the real estate industry and the social media industry, and kind of the, where the two converge to know it is very difficult to stay on top of this, especially once you start doing deals, whether it's through your Facebook or whether you're already doing lots of deals. You're going to get to the point where you're doing lots of deals and it's going to be very difficult to stay on top of this. And I want you to consider outsourcing this, whether it's to Mortgage Mingler or City Blast uh, or to a social media expert that you hire locally. I mean, Mortgage Mingler and City Blast are $60 a month. So uh, that's six zero dollars a month. Um, much more cost effective, in my opinion, than probably hiring someone locally. I used to charge fifteen hundred uh, when I was charging other agents in my office and doing it for them. Um, but definitely consider outsourcing this. This is a business practice. These posts are this is work. You need to get out there. You need to find great posts. You need to create them consistently. You need to be on a schedule where you're doing this consistently, day after day after day. Consider outsourcing it to somebody. The top producing agent uh, who's writing the most deals every month in your market is not sitting around on Facebook all day long. They are not, I don't care if they're getting their deals from Facebook, they are not personally sitting on Facebook um, keeping all of these things up to date. So definitely something to consider uh, for yourself as well. Beverly, did you want to add anything? Do we want to do some q and I think we're good to do some Q&A. We have a lot of questions coming in. Okay, um, cool. Like I said in the beginning, um, a lot of people are asking, we are going to be sending out a copy of the PowerPoint as well as a recording of this webinar tomorrow. So if you missed it or you know someone who wanted to view it, you could forward it over to them and then they can view it. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, one question that came in, um, if there are a lot of agents in my market, will I get the same posts as everyone else? So if, right. like, let's say, like right now, I'm in New York, so there are a lot of agents in my area. So let's say uh, there, you know, there are so many that are using your service. Are they going to get the same post as me? So if someone likes both of our pages, they're going to see that twice. The answer is absolutely not. So we have a team of human beings. Uh, you can actually see them here for City Blast. We have a whole team of people who are working away to create individual posts and send them out to you folks. So. One thing that we have as an advantage is um, we have all of this feedback uh, on the dashboard which shows um, we have a different dashboard for the social media experts who are doing your posts, but they are getting all this feedback and it's actually compiling engagement scores which help them choose which types of articles to post and what the write-ups should say. But 
they're writing individualized content and posting it out to you. So just as an example, when you're signing up, uh, try us now. When you're signing up, first you tell us where you work. It can be anywhere. We have uh, folks from all over God's Green Acre. Let's say I'm in Orlando. Tell us how often we should post. You can post all the way up to daily. Daily is a lot. I don't know if I would go all the way up to daily. I think I've got mine set to four times a week. That seems to be pretty good. And then you can see here, there's all different types of content. By the time you've customized all of this, it's a pretty specific and tailored strategy that we're doing for you. You can also call in and speak with the social experts who are working on your accounts anytime you want as well at our phone line. We're an office of real human beings and we're posting individualized content to try to best suit your strategy and to get your maximum engagement uh, for you. So, Absolutely not. We're not posting the same thing out to a number of different people. You're going to get completely customized content, all specific to you. Great. Okay. Um, someone else asked, uh, what if I'm in a small town where there isn't a lot of news going on? So there's really not a lot going on in this area um, to, to post what stuff do on do? the page. Right. Yeah. So here's what we do um, at Mortgage Mingler. What, what we do is we work outward in concentric rings. So if I were you, I would start by um, looking at the local newspapers and trying to fit, trying to find relevant um, real estate content. It doesn't always need to be real estate. Civic content works great. So if there's going to be a fair or if there's going to be um, something going on down in, in town or if there's something um, that's like a big event or a festival or any of that kind of thing, post stuff about that. If it's about, if there are local restaurants that are doing um, something interesting, post something about that. It doesn't always have to be real estate, but we like to focus on um, local real estate news. If we can't find anything that really has some good teeth to it and it's going to get high engagement locally, then we move outward. So we would go to like the area or the county level. And then we would move outward again to the state level and you'd get state news. And then we would move out again, or province if you're uh, in Canada. Um, we would move outward to the national level. So it doesn't always have to be hyper-localized content. Obviously Toronto's a big market, so it's pretty easy for my social media experts to just find a lot of uh, Toronto stuff and post it out to me. But you'll see um, as you go along, there are also a lot of tips, for instance, for um, tips for uh, cl uh, your clients or uh, for realtors, etc that uh, you could post out that have application basically across the entire country. And those are still great pieces of content as well. So definitely try to make a local focus, but I wouldn't break my back trying to just specifically find stuff about my local market either. Okay. Um, a lot of people are asking um, if you recommend having a specific Facebook page for business as opposed to one for personal or would you have two or do you combine the two? So here's the official policy. We say officially you should use your uh, business page and that's great. One challenge with using your business page is Facebook's requiring more and more that you spend money in order to get uh, more and more exposure on that page and so it's become a bit challenging. There's another challenge to using your business page which is if I'm going to get people on my business page, where do they come from? Well, normally they come from my personal page and then I convert them over onto my business page, which creates a problem right off the bat, which is that your, your business page is by definition going to be much smaller than your personal page. What I like to do is be very sure that I'm always using inbound marketing like we've talked about and then use my personal page. And if you feel comfortable with that, then like I do, you can get great returns from doing that. I'm using my personal page here because how would people say that I'm marketing myself, uh, for instance, on my personal page when all I'm doing is really posting the best jazz bars in Toronto, right? If you actually think about it, it's almost like not marketing. <laughs> it's almost like not marketing at all. Uh, restored schoolhouse in Spain. There's a property that could be construed as marketing, although we treat properties like a story and we kind of give them a, a storyline. Uh, cabin fever, five Toronto buyers let loose in cottage country. These things are not like marketing. So I, f I feel personally that I'm comfortable that they have a place on my personal page. And then I like to include a lot of personal stuff as well, pictures of uh, 
myself at the beach and doing fun things and all the other stuff that I do. Um, I like using the personal page for those reasons. So it all depends on what you want to do and what you're comfortable with. And it's, it's more important to understand the choice you're making than whichever choice you specifically make and then ex execute on your decision the best way that you can. Okay, great. Um, all right, I have a specific question about uh, Mortgage Mingler and City Blast. Um, when when uh, you post to their social media for them, do your managers have access to log into their Facebook account? No, so uh, that's a great question. Um, the answer is absolutely not. What we do is we simply have you install the City Blast app uh, on your Facebook, which you can do right from our site. It's at the bottom of the sign-up process. So if I chose Chicago, and then I chose how often to post, and then I choose the type of content. When I click the send button, it's going to transmit my instructions to a social media expert at Mortgage Mingler, and it's going to pop up a window. I can't do it right now because I'm, lo I'm already logged into Facebook and I already have a Mortgage Mingler account, but if, when you do it and you click there, it's going to say, Mortgage Mingler wants permission to post on your behalf, and you're going to say, allow, and that's it. We can never see your account. We can't see your pictures, anything you've written. We can't log in as you. We can't do any of that stuff. All that it does is give us permission to post to your account on your behalf under the parameters you've given us here. So you've told us what, what market, you've told us how often, you've told us what types of content you want, and we offer all these great different styles which can suit your style. And then you click send, you send the instructions to uh, one of our managers, and we are given permission just to create the posts. And that's it. We never log into your account. We have no access to log into your account or anything like that. Great. All right. Um, we have time for one more question. So um, this actually um, is also about your product. Does it cost more if I want to post more often? So like, let's say they want to post seven days a week. Does their account cost more than the account that's four days a week? Right. Uh, no. The answer is absolutely not. It doesn't matter how you configure your account. So you can choose to post however often you want, three times, two times, seven times. It all costs the same. Plus, Mortgage Mingler will manage your Facebook, your personal Facebook, your Facebook fan page, both, your Twitter, and your LinkedIn, all included, or any combination of those that you want. And it's all the same price. And I'll show you uh, here because I'm confident that people out there are wondering. Even if you want to go month to month, first of all, there's a two-week free trial uh, we're offering. And uh, I think I've got that here. There's a two-week free trial that we're offering. So if you sign up now, we'd love for you to check us out. We absolutely 100% stand behind this product. Check us out. We will get an expert started working on your behalf, following your instructions for two weeks, absolutely free. We're going to get that person working for you to try us out. Also, using the promo code NMP, which you see on the screen here, you guys, Beverly, have been so kind uh, as to work out a deal for these folks. We're going to give 20% off for life. Now, that's for life. The maximum amount you could pay as, without the discount code is $60 a month, and that's if you want to go month to month. Uh, there is absolutely no contract. You can just cancel anytime you want, two-week free trial. After the two-week free trial, it would normally be $60 a month. With the 20% discount, I guess that goes down to about $48 bucks a month. Uh, if you want to do longer, if you, if you get started and you say, you know what, my expert is killing it, I love this, you can do six months, you can do a year, and the price only goes down from there. You can get it down to about a dollar a day, um, which I think you'll agree is an awesome deal. I know uh, I haven't pulled the mortgage mingler uh, side stats recently, but I know we estimate that we make about seven to 8,000 in commissions per member per year. Uh, that's our current uh, trailing 12 months. So when you're paying a dollar a day, around you know, 300 and uh, change a year, to make back, even if you made back 5,000, you'd be way, way, way ahead of the game. And we're offering you the free trial. In addition to the free trial, you can call us anytime. I'm going to actually go to the site here. Hopefully you've got this, guys, 20%. The discount is NMP. Remember that promo code. I'm just going to go to the site here and show you as well. 
at this number here, 1-855-GO-MINGLE, uh, you can call us anytime and you can speak. I think you don't need to dial the E, but uh, you can call us anytime and speak to social media managers. We will give you a free 30-minute assessment of your Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn presence and help you. We'll even give you free cover uh, art for your um, your accounts. We will speak to you about how you can improve your write-up, what you can do differently, tips, tr tricks, tweaks. We're here to help you. We stand behind our product. We're, we're happy to have you do it yourself, but just like anything else in life, it can be a bit daunting to do it all yourself, and if that, it's something that you want us to do for you, we're happy to do it for you. So absolutely, we'd love to do that. Great. Well, thank you so much for, for uh, the, this informative presentation, also for offering that, the, uh, the great discount to our uh, audience. Yeah. Um, and with that being said, I um, just want to thank you, Sean, for a great presentation. And um, thank the audience for taking the time out of the day to attend the webinar. Again, if you have any questions, um, you'll be able to, you can direct them to Mortgage Mingler. We're also going to be sending out an email um, tomorrow, so you can always respond to that as well. And I'll make sure that Sean receives your questions so he can answer them. Um, and Absolutely, that being yeah. said, uh, thank you, Sean, and thank you to MortgageMingler.com and CityBlast.com for uh, sponsoring this webinar. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Hope to see you at our next webinar. Thanks, guys.